host Gary Fox and tonight we are going to uh, try to accomplish several things. First of all we're going to try to uh, calculate how much lift we'll get out of that drum if we have somewhere between zero immersion to halfway immersed. Second we're going to do we're going to uh, look at how to solve a problem and show you that it kind of works the same way as if you're trying to disassemble something mechanically or think about how to build something. Uh, you think of all the parts and pieces that you have to assemble and cut and make to, uh, to build something. And we're going to do the same thing with disassembling this problem. And then the third thing is I'm going to show you a little bit about using a, a spreadsheet to do the calculations. We did a little of that last time, but this time the calculations are going to get a little more complicated. Okay, I've got the same picture I had before. This time I decided to try it with a black background. And the red line represents our uh, cutaway view of the barrel, barrel. And the barrel's laying horizontal in the water. The blue line represents the water line. And then these dotted lines represent the center line of the uh, of the barrel. And that gets to the first part of trying to solve a problem. Usually you're a whole lot better off if you can find a point where everything is symmetric and then you only have half as much problem to solve. So it makes a lot of sense for our reference line to be right here in the center. However, the water dictates that its reference is going to be the point where it moves up and then of course the bottom of the barrel also could be our reference line. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to have our reference at zero but we're going to start out with it at a reference here at the bottom of the barrel. I never thought of it that way until I said it. At the bottom of the barrel and then uh, as it gets immersed, we're going to calculate that offset compared to the center. So you'll see that here in just a second. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to draw a line, a radial line, from the center of the barrel to the point where the water line meets the uh, OD of the barrel, the outside diameter of the barrel. And by using the symmetric I am getting two angles that are going to be exactly equal because this is straight up and down right through the middle. So this angle here is going to be exactly the same as that. And now as I dimension this, you'll see how the problem is actually going to work out. We have the immersion depth, which is how deep the barrel is starting to sink into the water. And then from that, we can calculate the radius minus the immersion depth. And that's going to give us a, a side of a triangle right here, a right triangle. Because that's what we're going to have between the water line and the line going straight up. From that, we also have the uh, hypotenuse of that right triangle, which is a radius. And we know what that is. So we will be able to use our trigonometry. And we'll be able to use an arc cosine to calculate Remember, cosine is, op, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we know the adjacent, we know the hypotenuse, so we can calculate the arc sine of that angle right there. Once we have the arc sine of that angle, we can calculate this length right here, L. And L is going to be important to us in a little bit. And we can double that angle and we can calculate what the, uh, what the full triangle is. Okay, now... We know what the whole area is of this, of this uh, circle. We've calculated that already. So what we're doing, we're taking a pie slice out, and I'll show you what I'm just talking about here. This right in here, the whole piece, including the round part, is as if we're cutting a big piece of a pie out, just like those pie charts that you're, uh, that you're given. You know how your money goes at tax time and so on and so forth. Uh, it's a pie chart here. So this is a pie slice and that's spelled P-I-E not P-I. 
and uh, this is a slice of the pie and that's a percentage of the whole so we should be able to calculate what this whole area is right in here and once we have that and let's turn off the uh, let's turn off this part of it we have this distance right here so two times that distance is the full width of the triangle we have the height that's radius minus depth so we're able to calculate the area of that triangle. We subtract that from the pi, the pi slice area, and we now know what the immersion is, which is the uh, cyan, the light blue area on this, on this picture right here. That's how we're going to go about calculating this thing. So I'm going to try something here. I'm not real sure if it's going to work. Let's see if I can go part way on this thing, and I just goofed up. Okay, we're going to try to uh, shrink this down, bring it back up. Ah, some of that automatic stuff that I hate. Okay, we got it shrunk down, and now we're going to try to make it so we can see just the part that we want to see there, and we've got our picture back up there only it's covering part of the screen and now we can see although it's very small we can see what the heck we're trying to calculate here okay I'm setting up a spreadsheet here and the spreadsheet's going to be a little hard to use but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the immersion depth and what I did let's blow this up and then we'll shrink it back down took the immersion depth and I just basically started with a number of one inch and then I worked up to 11 inches after 11.625 will be halfway immersed so since I'm going in increments of one I stopped at 11 okay once we do that let me shrink it back down we take the radius minus the immersion depth to come up with this angle this length of this side of that triangle and from that we're able to calculate the angle again and then we'll get that answer in radians because remember that's the way the uh, spreadsheet produces it we'll convert that to degrees and then we can figure out two times that divided by the total area will give us what the slice two times that divided by 360 will give us the pie slice portion of the total area. So then we we'll take the area of the pie slice. We can calculate our length angle L because that's basically once we have A we can calculate the length angle A L because that's basically the cosine of that angle that and times the radius I give us L. And then we'll have what the not immersed triangle area. We'll calculate that. And then we'll be able to subtract that from this. Sorry, the area of the pie slice. And that will give us the immersed area. Once we have the immersed area, we multiply it by the length of the uh, tank of the barrel. And we'll have the immersed volume. We can then calculate the weight of the uh, immersed volume. And then we'll be able to calculate the lift developed. So we're going to now work our way through this spreadsheet. So I'm going to have to expand it so I can find my other magic numbers. So my radius, we know, and the radius is equal to... this cell right up here and I want to always use that cell number and I just put the dollar sign in front of the two because I'm not going to move it left or right so I'm only going to use the uh, the cells got the location E2 and 2 is always going to stay the same so that's our radius minus this value right next to it okay now we calculate the angle and radians and the way we'll do that we'll do the arc cos of this side divided by 
the radius again. And the radius will not change. Okay, and now we'll convert that to degrees. So we'll take the. Whoops, I gotta do an equal in front of that. parentheses in the wrong place. Okay, it's 23.93 degrees. Okay, our pie slice will be two times that degrees. Two times that, so we'll take a let's see, equal two times that and the whole thing will be divided by 360. And so it's about 13% of the total thing. So the area of the pie slice will be that percent of that times the total area up in here of square inches. And we'll keep that one so we're always pointing to the same one. And so we got about 56 square inches. Okay, now we're going to calculate that length L that, that I had on the diagram. Let's bring the diagram back up so you remember. This length L right here, not the length of the barrel, but the length of this line right here. So we will calculate that, and that's going to be the radians, the, the radial size times the cosine of, not the sine of, and I gotta use the angle in radians, okay, the area of a triangle is equal to the height, which the height of that triangle was the radius minus the eighth, the uh, depth, times the width, which is two times this length, divided by two. And so that's the area of the triangle. So our immersed area will be the total area of the pi minus this area. And then our immersed volume will be that area times the length of the barrel. And I want to maintain that constant number there. So we've got 217 cubic inches of, of uh, immersed volume. The weight of that is equal to this immersed volume times times our magic number up there. Again, I want to stay at the same number every time. And our lift developed will be that weight minus the weight of the barrel. Again, I always want to point to the same place on that. And so we have no lift. We're still sinking because uh, it's going to still be heavier than what the barrel is. So the barrel is going to float less with more than one inch underwater. Okay, we got that for the whole thing. So now we're going to copy it. And all our numbers should work for all of them. And so now our immersion depth becomes less and less. Our angle becomes more. 
See, it's getting approaching 90 degrees there. So our pie splices, our pie slice portion of the total area is approaching 50% once we get down here. And we're getting that value. And why are we having some problems here? That's interesting. I want to find out what's going on here. So I may have to exit this just a minute and try to troubleshoot my uh, my problems. So I will be back. Yeah, we're getting some screwy numbers here. So somewhere or another my calculations are wrong. Hold on a minute and I will be back and fix this thing. I'm back again and I figured out the problem. And this is really a good chance to uh, show you a little bit about how a spreadsheet works. Uh, let me expand this spreadsheet just a little bit. Make it a little bit easier to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, if you look at this, uh, this formula right here, which is shown up at the top, it's E15 times A dollar sign 8. Okay, and so dollar sign 8, A8 is this location right here, and E15 is the portion of the uh, pie slice of the total area. So I'm multiplying that times the total area to come up with this. When I copy that down to the next to the next cell, you see that it's using E16 here, which means that it also moved that in relationship to the way that I copied it. Went from E15 to E16. But the A dollar sign 8 continues to point to the same place up here, which is in this case the uh, volume of the total circle. Okay, what I did here was that I did E2, and E2 is the uh, radius, times the sine of C16, which the sine of C16 was the, the angle in uh, radians. Well, the problem is I forgot to put the dollar sign on E2, and so E2 the next time became E3, E3 was 22 pounds. You see where E, instead of being the radius. And this one went to E4, which has nothing in it. And then once I got down here, it was pointing to E7, which was some text. So it really got mixed up. So all I have to do is change this one, correct this formula to E dollar sign 2. And now when I copy it, everything is fixed. And uh, one other thing I did while we were down was I calculated the four barrel lift because that gave me a chance to, uh, to calculate how close it was to the other one. If you remember right, we were 900 some pounds at, uh, at half immersed and I'm close to 900 pounds right now. So now the whole formula works, and I said everything correctly. I just forgot one of my dollar signs right here so that it made it point to a specific cell instead of pointing to a, uh, to a relative cell. And uh, that gives you a little chance to know how a, a spreadsheet works. And you now know how I calculated all this. So we're now calculating it. As the, uh, as the width increases, the lift is going to increase per pound. Let's do something here. Let's just do one real quick one. Um, we'll call it delta. Now let's call it change in, change in, yeah. Okay, the change here from one, two inches to one inch is going to be equal to this number minus the previous number. And you see that inch gained is 56 pounds lift. 
This next one's going to gain us 71 inches pounds of lift. And they're going to get bigger and bigger uh, as as it gets as it increases. So you can see that uh, it's gradually increasing the pounds per inch of immersion is increasing as we uh, get to larger diameters. Okay, next time we'll do the same kind of calculations, but we'll do them for a decreasing diameter. Uh, we'll do it above 50%, and you, you can see how that is. Uh, it would be real good for you to try to figure that out, because it's going to be a couple days before I get that video out. So it would be real good for you to see if you can figure out how to do the problem. It's very similar to this one. And I will provide this spreadsheet on my website. I'll also provide the... Uh, the uh, DXF LibreCAD file, if you have LibreCAD, and then the two pictures uh, of, of the uh, way I was doing this. The one with all the dimensions and the other one that shows the two triangles. So you can take a look at that on the website and from the website uh, download several things so that you can think about how this thing works. And uh, I think you will learn something about trigonometry. You'll learn something about spreadsheets. And you'll learn something about... Uh, you'll learn something about how to calculate using spreadsheets. Anyhow, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. This is Gary Fox. Great.